the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission has declared a state of emergency for both units of the Brunswick Nuclear Power Facilities in North Carolina. They claim again an unusual event. An unusual event. How unusual is it that you have some downed trees and a little bit of flood waters? How unu that, that's Something is off, okay? To me, I'm asking the question, why would you call it unusual when you have some downed trees and some flooded roadways, you know? I mean, it, you know, if it, you know, it may snow where you're at. You got a, you know, a snow covered driveway and, and, you know, you may have your, you know, maybe a tree branch down or what have you. You're not going to call into work, say, listen, I can't come in because there's been an unusual event. No, they're going to say, listen, everybody's driveway. It's got some snow on it. And there's some flooding throughout North Carolina, some down trees. Why would you call it an, an unusual event? Number one, number two, why would you, why would you declare a state of emergency? Okay, do they, are we idiots? We're not, but maybe they think we are. But, but let's continue. Maybe we're just jumping the gun here, okay? I'm simply reading the report though. I'm asking questions. It says here, an unusual event has occurred which is interfering with the ongoing hot shutdown of the nuclear power plants. Now, the hot shutdown is a process which takes several weeks to complete. Uh, I, there's actually full details uh, on the NRC uh, .gov nuclear power plant alert page, which I happen to have a copy of here. This is the US NRC .gov page. It's really, the website is nrc.gov. And this is where they put out for the Brunswick power plant an unusual event alert right here. Not sure how, how clear that may be coming in. Uh, you know, to the uh, the viewing audience, okay? Uh, but it says here, unusual event due to site conditions preventing plant access. This is good. Now, they have to put this as public information, but are they putting out the whole story? They claim, and I quote, a hat, now this is according to the website, okay, concerning Brunswick Nuclear Power Plant. They claim, and I quote, a hazardous event. And I'll see how close I can get here again. I don't know how, how clear it'll come in, but this is what it says right here in this highlighted area. It says here, a hazardous event has resulted in on-site conditions sufficient to prohibit the plant staff from accessing the event, or not the event, the site, via personal vehicles due to flooding of local roads by Tropical Storm Florence. So, so, okay, a hazardous event. I mean, is it 10 foot of water? Uh, maybe it's pretty deep. You know, maybe there's some, some seriously deep areas that they called it a hazardous event. But that's where they say, turn around, don't drown, right? Uh, again, they put out a state of emergency. Something seems off about this. A hazardous event has resulted in on-site conditions sufficient to prohibit the plant staff from accessing the site via personal vehicles due to flooding of local roads. That doesn't make sense to me. Why not just say that the plant staff was unable to access the site via personal vehicles due to flooding of local roads? Why put in the fact that it's a hazardous event? Why put in the word hazardous? They called it an unusual event. This is what they put on the US or on the NRC.gov page. Why call it unusual? There's nothing unusual with floodwaters. It happens in a tropical storm that once was a hurricane. I'm just breaking this thing down as simple as simple as I can. I mean, it's not hard. So again, I'm just simply asking the question. Anyway, it goes on to say. It goes on to say here in the article, notified Department of Homeland Security, SWO, FEMA, Ops, DHS, and, and more. Notified FEMA, Nuclear SSA, and FEMA NRCC via email. And uh, I don't want to get two, two reports here mixed up. I got a couple reports here mixed up, and I don't mean to. It says here, the Brunswick Power Facilities, this is in other words, okay? This is according to Natural News. In other words, the Brunswick Power Facilities can no longer be accessed by workers and technicians even as they are running a hot shutdown which requires human oversight. How, can they, how are they running a hot shutdown without any humans? Is there anybody there? 
Isn't that a risk? Maybe that's why they called it hazardous. Maybe that's why they called it an unusual event. Maybe it's beyond the flooded little roadways and in the down trees. Maybe it's the fact that they're driving a vehicle with no man behind the steering wheel. Okay, now I'm, again, we're just putting it out there. The Brunswick power plants, in other words, are running blind. They're running blind. So that's the unusual event. This is, this is the, the part that they're not telling the public. Again, we, we got the report. They, they are running a hot shutdown. It requires human oversight. The unusual event is the fact that they are driving a vehicle without no one behind the steering wheel, and it's not a Tesla. It's not one of those self-driving electric cars here. This is a nuclear power plant that's running, again, a hot shutdown with no human oversight. This is extremely dangerous. It says here, it's been, uh, you know, just as it was reported here, Hurricane Florence achieved a direct hit on Brunswick power facilities. Uh, that was recognized a few days ago once the hurricane came on shore. It drenched the entire area of the Brunswick nuclear power plant with unprecedented rain and flooding. And um, here, you know, we got some, some, some pictures. I'm not sure how how well it may come in. I'll see what I can do here. But uh, here, here's a, you know, the map of the area, right? Here's a Brunswick power plant, the nuclear power plant, and this is exactly where the hurricane hit, okay? I mean, they, they got hit, folks, and uh, it, it was a huge risk of a nuclear emergency that could take place. Now, the NRC has declared an emergency. Again, they declared it a state of emergency. They've declared it an unusual event and an emergency declared. Well, it's an emergency. You know, you're going to call the cops if you see a vehicle driving full speed ahead without a driver behind it. That's that's that that now I can see why they use the word hazardous. Now I can see why they use the word unusual. OK, they're not putting it out there, though, but we are now the NRC has declared an emergency at the Brunswick facility. Personnel are not able to access the plant, which is running a hot shutdown sequence that requires human oversight. No humans were able to get through, though, to the plant. The facility is apparently running blind. At risk is the entire eastern seaboard. You may say, what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is that the entire seaboard is at risk. The entire seaboard of the United States, the eastern seaboard of the United States of America is at risk, which would be rendered uninhabitable for 300 years if a nuclear fuel meltdown actually occurred. And of course, no one in the news media, the fake news media, seems to think this is important enough to cover because you got Weather Channel having a reporter exaggerate the... The, 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 the storm that did hit, by the way, but over-exaggerate uh, some scenes that took place. And apparently it's not the first time CNN has done it prior with Anderson Cooper pretending he's, he's in waist-deep water and camera crew is only at ankle-length water and some other reporter on a canoe and, 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 and people walking by her. It was a mess, folks. It, it, this is apparently fake news. They're too busy making sure they're getting your views and they're getting you all riled up for nothing. Listen, if you're going to get riled up, let it be because there's some true facts coming out. Let it be because, you know, hey, listen, um, we're, we're running a nuclear power plant with no one behind the wheel and you may need to take cover. You know, you may need to kind of get out the area. Maybe the reason why uh, we had, uh, uh, you know, mandatory evacuated or evacuated, uh, mandatory, 1.5 million people. Well, maybe because, of, you know, this may hit one of the power plants and we didn't want you all to, you know, be part of a possible, God forbid, nuclear meltdown. Now, listen, we don't want nuclear meltdown. We don't want any meltdown, folks, but they're not, they're not covering the whole news here. Mainstream media is not covering the whole news, and it is our job to sound the alarm, to bring the news. I'm an evangelist, for crying out loud. We bring the news. Now, of course, being an evangelist, we bring the news matching biblical prophecy, and we have to understand that we are living in the last days, and these are the signs of the times. Jesus warned us that these weather events were going to take place, that the seas and the waves roaring that men's hearts would even fail them from fear for the things that will be coming upon the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. But it's also our position, our pleasure to receive the good news of Jesus Christ, to understand that even though we're in this world, we don't need to be of it. 
Even though we see the signs that are around us, we can walk by faith and not by sight. We can walk in the spirit and not in the lust of the flesh. We can understand that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And we can boldly proclaim the salvation and, and the saving message of Jesus Christ to a very lost and dying world that needs to know that they're not just, you know... Uh, they don't need to just be subservient to the whims of fake news media or fake mainstream media. That's not giving them the whole story. They can receive the word of God. They can have the mind of Christ so that they can prepare for the times that are upon us. Get the extra food. Get the extra water. Have the wisdom of God to know what to do when a crisis hits and even before then. All right, listen, there's more. Is there more to this particular article? That's the question. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? The days are getting darker, and the times of the end is without a doubt upon us. The rescue mission that we are on to save souls in this world is urgent. But I must be straight with you. We find our ministry right now in a type of rescue mission in this present hour. Friends, we have a right now urgent financial need to help continue this important work. We do not have mega corporations or government grants helping our ministry in any way unlike many churches of today. But we like it that way because it keeps the word of God free from compromise and reproach in this end time ministerial work. Now, of course, that does not mean that we are free from financial obligation that must be met on a monthly basis to keep our online church ministry, our broadcasting, our school of ministry, our websites and servers, and, and basic expenses to keep this needed ministry going strong. It means not going your way anymore. It means not trusting in your own efforts. Some of you say, you know what, I think that I'm about to die tonight, I think I'd make it. Nowhere in the Bible does Jesus Christ is Lord, and he is coming very quickly. He's to plow in this end-time harvest. Folks, we're plowing in the end-time harvest. We're plowing. We're not looking back. We're plowing in the name of Jesus. Put your hand next to us and plow right along with us so that we can get this work done. And that is where you, our precious viewers and partners, come in. Friends, I'm asking for your financial support to give to the work of this end time ministry as best as you can in a way that you have not done before or maybe ever done before. Now, I've always said no donation is too small or too large to help support the work of this ministry, and I mean it. Of course, however, the more generous amount you can give brings much more of an immediate relief to our need. Friends, we offer no gimmicks for your donations, but what we do promise is kingdom results. We promise to continue sounding the alarm that the day of the Lord is at hand. We promise to preach the word of God by the power of God's Holy Spirit, unadulterated and uncompromising to a lost and dying world. We promise to teach the word of God in sincerity of truth and the fear of God. Can we depend on you today? Please give securely on our website at www.emoaf.org www.emoaf.org. I'll even ask, would you consider being a monthly donor? Friends, I don't mean for this request to be so lengthy, and I certainly did not expect to bring a broadcast like this, but for the ministry's sake, I'm glad. And I give God praise that he has graced me to humble myself by his Holy Spirit to do so. It is in great reverence and respect in the fear of the Lord and his Holy Spirit. Thank you for hearing me and for helping support the work. It's that time of year again. EMOF School of Ministry presents Session 5, 2018-2019 school year. And this year's focus, emotions. We all have them, but how do we not let it have us? Well, register today. Sign on to be part of our live School of Ministry classes starting September 18th, 2018, Tuesday at 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Classes include 11 full exegesises with 40 full weeks of courses. Each course is designed to bring truth and understanding in light of deadly emotions. You don't want to miss this session five. Get more information on our website at www 
OpenYourEyesPeople.com, www.OpenYourEyesPeople.com. Register today. We look forward to seeing you there.